I have an RX-8. It's like being married to a supermodel. Tender care, lots of money, but when you slip inside and <laughs> thrashing, it's pure heaven. Okay, it's bench talk time. Yep, and I'll start off with uh, this this bloke. He's putting a 26B, so that's a quad rotor, if people aren't into rotaries. But not, not many people do them because they're pricey and there's a lot of obviously a lot of work. It's extremely custom. But anyway, he's putting it in an FJ Holden U. So it's a very unique car, very unique build, but of course, true Aussie enthusiasts, as you'd call them, I guess, they're not happy about this one. Sound gay, f the rad car, put it in a Civic or some rice burning piece of Jap shit. Saying on, he's he's gonna put it in a front wheel drive because this this bloke bloke knows a lot, and put a whopping V8 in it and make real men happy, please. This act actually hurts the heart of a lot of blokes. You know, I've got a real passion for mullets. I've had my mullet for 46 years now. Now it wouldn't be bench talk without some uh, RX8 comments. You mean love of the RX8, hate of the RX8? The, you can't dare diss the famous RX8 rotary sports car. Australia is as far as away from the center of the automotive universe as you can get without leaving the planet. No one cares about the scene there. We copped a bit of grief on one of our other videos about uh, calling a manual a stick shift. Really? Yeah, you, mean, a, you mean you called it a stick shit, didn't you? Stick you, you shit? Couldn't, you couldn't even pronounce it Oh, that's probably. right. But I've, we've actually got uh, the real meaning of a stick shit is when you've been camping at Bathurst and you've consumed nothing but beer and Smith's salt and vinegar chips. You're so constipated, you haven't had a shit for three days, so you have to break the big lump up of the dry turd that's blocking you up and dig the bastard thing out with a stick. Wow. So this was actually the best sounding shitty barras out there. Sounds so crap. Like a vacuum cleaner. Wow. What a great crisp sounding engine, lol. Listen to the engine in the C30 Volvo, then come back to me and listen to this turd or any V8 ever made. If you know a Ford XR5 Focus with the five cylinder, that's where the engine comes from. It comes, it's a Volvo engine. So it's just one of these little runarounds and he's saying how crap the barras are and how good this thing sounds. Well, he's got a, he's, he's got a fair point though. Comment from the USA. Bastards. 40's ours. Yet they even sell only the good engine they have ever made, ever only in Australia. <laughs> over at Ford can guzzle an infinite bucket of black <laughs> Do people actually like think about these comments or they just start typing Americans odd, odd bunch sometimes? Every time I uh, see comments like that, I always have that meme, you know, what is it? Moments before this post was written. <laughs> Now we featured recently a, an awesome time attack uh, Datsun 240Z by CCC Racing and it got it got extremely positive responses, it should. It was probably ours and many yeah. others' favourite car at the event. It was one of the coolest cars we've featured in a while but there's always got to be a Haiti, hater. Just an empty 240Z shell, nothing 240 about this at all. You could stick a Jeep shell on this and achieve the same thing. So, hang on, let me get this straight. It's an all steel body 240Z. But it's a and, 240 chassis. And in the video, he even says he doesn't want to pull weight out of it because that would mean cutting, cutting it's out of the car. And he's basically left classic. It, I don't know what the hell this guy is going on about. He's just added some aero to a standard chassis. He's put some flares on it so he can put a wider wheelbase on it. And he would have obviously probably modified the tunnel or something for the transmission. That's about it. Do it, people think that OE cars are just shells like a, a NASCAR? You just take one shell off and put the other one on. What the hell are people talking about? What's up with that gearbox? Sequential shifter? If it's a power glide, it's not really a road car anymore. Two speed road car is stupid. So he only drove it like two and a half, three hours each way to the track, but it's not a road car apparently. Because it's only got two gears. What is it with people? Three gears. It seems to be a constant thing we get about if someone's got a two speed, it's not a street car. Actually, what, I just realised. What are they on about? He's going on. It's a power glide. Well, if you'd actually watch the video, it's actually a three-speed turbo 400. In that, in that car, yes. Yeah, so he can't speed. even get the transmission right to start with. No. But it, regardless, even if it had a power glide, why do they always say it's not a street car? It, uh, it comes across as someone who's probably never actually experienced anything, a two-speed, probably anything actually. But 
We've been in two speeds on the street. If you got the right engine set up, they actually drive a lot better than you think. It's not, wouldn't be my probably choice, but there's a reason they put two speeds in them too, because they're making so much torque and power, the gearing actually helps it put it to the ground. But I mean, these guys know better. Well, you think that's bad, it gets better. I might be hugely wrong. Well, you are, mate, just to precurse this. <laughs> Wouldn't you be redlining everywhere doing the speed limit? Like, that, ma that makes sense. He's only got two gears. It's because you're in second gear. Imagine trying to do 100, you're just on the freeway, 100k, second gear. But hang on, how do you get down the quarter mile? How did, how did he just go 250k's an hour if he's redlining at the speed limit? So hasn't he answered his own question? Anyway, like, there's a reason why companies like ZF invest billions in R&D Billions. Billions and billions and billions and billions. To build a 10 speed transmission. Personally, I think it's stupid having 10 gears, but so is only having two. What does it matter? They build 10 speeds now because they're basically getting sitting the car and it's talk, desired torque band all the time. But it does work like that. So if you have a one speed gearbox, that's 50 k's an hour, two speed. Add another gear, that's that's 150 k's. Put a four speed in the car, that's 200. That's, that's how... That's how it works. That's how transmissions work. Recently too, Broomy did a, um, he just did a Tech, tech uh, Tuesday video about the new turbo smart range of blow valves and wastegates. The port top is a V, so it's easily identified if you're wondering if you've got a wastegate, someone's selling one somewhere or it's on a car, what kind it is. Why do you keep referring to it as Gen V? It's their Gen 5 product as their last gen was Gen 4. It's got nothing to do with the top hat outputs. Now, of course, he referred to it as a Gen V. Because on their website, it's called a Gen V. And the also, V means five. I didn't know that, Roman numerals. You learn something new every day. I don't know what I was doing at school, but... I'm learning. But Broomy happened to mention that the top of the gate has kind of a V shape in it and goes, that's how you can recognize it. But nah, nah, it's all wrong. This the guy said we were misleading the public. Misleading the public. All, highly misleading. All he was stating was it's got a V type logo on the top. That's how you can recognize it. And TurboSnart referred to them as a Gen V on their own website. Well, no, I don't think that we're mis... I don't think... Uh, I think he's uh, highly misleading. Jumping in shadows there, mate. Cum shot. Should be this truck's name. A few spurts and it's all over. So I parked my car here. A few days later, I came back to get my car to notice that there was a new sign put up and I had been given a parking ticket. On this week's instalment of just, what is it, what do you want to call it? Why, Council. why councils suck? Yeah, that's, that's pr a pretty good thing to go with. Now this girl, she did the wrong thing. She parked too close to an intersection. You can't park within, probably had nowhere to park though, but well, there's, that, usually, that there's usually a line and most people park there, you can't park there anyway. So she gets fined for parking too close to an intersection. $337 parking fine too, yeah, seems but a bit extreme. She said that, I'll wear that. So she's left the car there for like two days. While the car's there, they come and installed a no standing sign. They've actually put it in, you can see the fresh concrete, and she's actually got another fine for parking in front of a no stopping sign. Stopping sign, but because she got uh, fined for the first one, she's got proof that the sign wasn't there. There's a photo with the sign. Because the in parking inspector, whatever, has taken a photo and showed there's no sign. So then obviously there's some proof. She's gone to the council and said, hey, this was installed after the car was parked. Do you think they'd dismiss it? God, no. The council are nothing but a pack of The age-old question of whether humans need to be told what to do has, at last, been answered. Doesn't make sense. When Campbelltown Council resurfaced the car park at Lumia train station, they forgot one small yet crucial detail. Parking bays. What's yeah, happened? this is my car, I cannot get out. I've been in third world countries and they learn know how to drive better than this. To be fair, councils do have many considerations vying for their attention, such as Jamaican fact-finding tours and increasing councillors' pay, to shifting Australia Day and boycotting Israel. Surely this uh, this clip here, surely it's a stolen car. But of course, I, I, found, I found the audio. These these files never have audio, but of course I've, I've done some digging and found that. You're pretty good at finding uh, missing audio files. I just don't want to give you my lighter. How's this? Full Skynet coming to your car near you. European is leading the way in tracking and control. 
the European Commission, Parliament and Council have approved legislation to make a whole heap of safety changes. And one of the headlining term items is the intelligent speed limiting. Could you imagine having this in your car? So you're driving along and the car's able to recognize via GPS where it is on the road and say, hey, you can only do 100 k's an hour and stop you from going any faster. So you're just gonna have basically 100 cars just tailgating each other going down the freeway. Actually, it's just no different to driving on a Melbourne freeway. No. But, um, and apparently in an emergency, you can somehow um, override it. This type of stuff. I mean, they always say this could, this is kind of coming. I just can't see it happening. It's in new cars, but I mean, the technology there, no, yeah, they could do it. I, I can't see it happening unless like the car is full on electric and it's basically driverless autonomous. Yeah. That's different, but you can't be behind the wheel of a car and all of a sudden computers taking over and it's won't let you accelerate. This just seems madness. That was nearly as good as that idea. Remember that um, politician was going to give truck drivers electric shocks? The electric shocks, yeah. <laughs> to look away from the windscreen or something? Mm. A Monash University study has found more than half of motorists see cyclists as less than human, comparing them to cockroaches and mosquitoes. Don't, don't really need to say any more, do we? Huh? Don't really need to say any more about that one. Did you see this? There was some sort of Wi-Fi issue, I don't know, to do it with was the a, shop, There was it? a router or some sort of IT equipment. Something got in the way. Long story short, all the cars in front of this shop, people couldn't get into them. It was at a shopping centre, and there was like dozens and dozens of people came out to their cars, and their, their remotes for the car would not work. The car, they could not unlo unlock the car, and it was a lot of people. There's an investigation underway tonight after more than 100 motorists in Joondalup were locked out of their cars in mysterious circumstances. The keyless entry technology on their vehicles was jammed, sparking fears of a hacking attack. Locked out in bizarre circumstances, dozens of shoppers returning to their cars to find they can't get in. Initially, there were fears that the devices were being deliberately targeted by hackers, but police said they did not believe it was a criminal act. One theory is the disruption was caused by a device as simple as an internet router. One of the coolest videos I've seen this week, or actually it was a few weeks ago, uh, was a review and a drive on a Lotus Carlton. Now, for those that don't know, this is basically a hotted up VN Commodore on steroids. Out of the factory. Yeah, I remember this car when we were in high school. So it was effectively like an Opal. It was based off, it's the same chassis as like a VN Commodore effectively. Mm. They looked a bit different and they had a twin turbo V6. These things could do no, like- No, 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 twin turbo straight six. You sure? Yeah, it was a straight six, 3.6 litre. It was oh. a big cube inline six. Sorry, I thought it was a V6. I don't no, know no, 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 it was an inline six, 100%. Anyway, this thing could do what? 270 k's an hour or something. It, it, was, like, it was quicker than my, at the time most supercars. It yeah. was like fa it was fast. Ford or something. They were very expensive. And even got in the UK Parliament, they were trying to. There was calls to ban it. Yeah, because people were using them. This was like you know people used to use WRXs as like getaway mm. cars. They were using them, stealing them, and using them as that fact. But yeah, check out this video. It's really cool. I've never. Uh, there's not many videos about this car online that are new. Do you know what no, I mean? They're no, all no. like you know back from the, that era. But and a lot of people, if you're a bit um bit younger, you would you would never have remember. You know, you wouldn't be yeah. aware this car ever existed. It was a bit ahead of its time, really. Oh, it was, it's a cool cool car. The need for speed has got the better of a driver showing off his ride at a supercar demonstration in West London. Now the driver revs the Lamborghini's engine and accelerates down the street before losing control. Now, probably a lot of people would have seen this video because it was all over the news, this guy crashing his Lambo in London, you know, like... It seemed to be on every mainstream news for a night. The, the thing I found so interesting was when it happened and, and you saw like a long shot, it wasn't... No one walked up and said, hey, you all right, whatever. It was just this. Better film it, Bo. Better, better, better film, it, film bro. it, bro. Bro, bro. Film it. It's going to go viral. going to go viral. Live so streaming. Like, everyone is just filming everything. Like, well, actually, no, I did it the wrong way. See, I got this because I'm I do camera work. But everyone's just vertical video syndrome. Now, there's been a lot of talk in the last, uh, I don't know, month, six weeks about electric cars in Australia. It's purely because we've got an election coming up. So it's basically the toy that, well, you've got a, what is it? A choice of two morons. You can vote for either one. I'm not voting for either of them. <laughs> But anyway, the NMRA have called for a ban on the sale of petrol and diesel cars by 2030. Is there like, does anyone just go outside and have a look and think, 
how's that going to work, in all honesty? Hey, hang on, hang on. Who, who promoted, who, who suggested that? Greens, was it? The NMRA. Oh, NMRA. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, but they're, they're, they're pretty... I think they just do it to get in the headlines. Is it really going to happen? They make, they, they make calls that they should ban them, but they're not actually the ones in charge of it all. And it, it may, makes sense of, say, you know... Uh, I don't know, 70% of new car sales at the moment were electric, but what is it, 0.9 of a percent? If I know, it's, a, it's been one hell of a quick phase out. And then it's it. almost, who's going to buy, who's, what, actually, what, what would it even, actually, what would happen too, unless the electric car price came right down, which you'd hopefully, it you'd should, just have a situation, everyone when, would be buying second hand cars. Yeah, no one would actually start, unless there's an incentive there to buy a new car that's actually well priced and meets your needs, why would you buy it? There is nothing wrong with electric cars. I don't have a problem with it at all. But the problem, obviously, at the moment is they're way too expensive. They're and way there's no expensive. infrastructure. Like yeah. 50 grand is buying a car in reality is a 20 grand car. It's, yeah. it's not good. Everyone thinks uh, Tesla, Tesla. Teslas are expensive. They're not... Teslas are insanely ins expensive. But they're not um, an indication of what the average person is driving on the road. No way. Okay. Here's one that just does my head in. People sitting in the right hand lane, keep left unless overtaking. It actually says that on the sign as you drive past on the freeway to all the people who act like they didn't know the law existed. So the police actually, New South Wales police actually find this Camry driver for sitting for sitting in the right hand lane on a highway. I think they followed them for quite a few kilometres as no one in sight gets fined. But there was a lot of backlash saying he shouldn't have been fined. Yeah, it's unreal. People and who... how, can, how can you possibly know all the road rules? And sure, there's road rules you wouldn't know. I agree there. There's some very obscure parking road rules. They're not written on signs on the side of the freeways to drive by them. Like, yeah, but there's a, a lot of really odd, say, parking signs, uh, road rules that a lot of people may not know. But keeping left unless overtaking, I mean, that's like saying, I don't know what the green light means on the traffic light. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Like, if you've never heard of that, seriously, there's signs everywhere. How, how can you not? I, I, don't I, know I actually, not I actually think it must be it must be people who don't get on freeways or highways much and just drive in a and city. just drive around the suburbs yeah. of the city. That, that see, well, if you've driven on the highway, surely you know about this rule. Mm. I was driving on on East Link yesterday on the way home. There was a car in the right lane, wouldn't move over. So you basically had yeah, 80 cars across three lanes in the space of 100 meters, just like a block. And you go, it is so dangerous. And it was mm. all happened because one car wouldn't move, get get the. F out of the way and let everyone pass. Well, the common the common thread you could see in there though was people saying, but if they're doing the speed limit, they're doing nothing wrong. No, it is not your job to dictate the speed limit. If someone behind you wants to do 30 over the limit, they're gonna do it. Get out of the way. It's as simple as that, it's courteous. Like, and on top of that, you're creating a traffic jam. If that fast car goes past, he's gone. A few other people, on top of that, people are going by their car speedos. If you get your car speedo and go, I'm gonna sit on 100, your car is most likely doing 95. Put a proper GPS or something accurate in your car and you'll mm. see how inaccurate your speedo actually is. I could go on about this for days, but I won't. It's Sunday afternoon in Silverdale. Residents on Curran Place are about to witness their quiet cul-de-sac resemble a drag strip. It's called a gender reveal burnout style. The thick blue smoke symbolises it's a boy and behind the wheel, it's a man, one who's now had his car confiscated. We, we have actually covered this in a very early bench talk way back where people seem to think they're going to bag a car park and they for their friend, I'm guessing, and they stand in the car park. They physically stand in it. You're not a car. You can't do that. It's pretty bad social etiquette to do that. And then they have a cry when someone actually comes in a car thinking they're going to park and they're like, no, 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 my friend's parking here, man. You can't park it. Piss off. Seriously. I'll Get the f*** out of here. There'll be people here that disagree with us, but no, that's just wrong. How can you disagree with it? You're not a car. You can't walk around and go, oh, I'm going to take that car park and stand in it. I mean, oh, don't worry. You're standing be, on the road. There'll be a comment about that. We don't even need to write the comments for this one. Cyclists now want you to pay them $5 a day to ride to work. Bike advocates are calling for cyclists to be paid $5 for riding to work. It's part of a proposal being put to the federal government. The Bicycle Network wants cyclists to earn $5 for each trip, up to $1,100 a year. A few comments, do we even need to write here? Okay, so they can get in my way and do, I don't know, 50 k's under the speed limit and I've got to give them money? 
Riders wouldn't be GPS tracked, instead they'd fill out a manual logbook similar to drivers, then submit details at tax time so payment would only come at the end of the financial year. There also wouldn't be a minimum distance required.